The Bible reading this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, the rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mandy. It may seem strange that we're just a couple of days out from Valentine and yet we are talking about bereavement. Um, But the truth is that God loves us all and we don't need to wait till Valentine to tell God how much we love him and know that he loves us. But death and bereavement, sorrow and grief are a fact of life and we'll explore this further. So before we do, let us pray. Father God, you meet with us where we are. You know every heart gathered here and those that may listen online. Lord, I pray that you meet every heart, that you minister to each person individually, and that you bring comfort, release, and freedom. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The nation um, collectively grieved over the death of Queen Elizabeth II. And for many of us who had only known Queen Elizabeth as our monarch, it was a real big shock. For some reason, um, I imagined Queen Elizabeth sending herself a 100 birthday card as she does that for so many other people. And I imagined that when I came to the end of my life that she would still be there on the throne. I thought she would live into probably 120 plus. So it was really difficult for me to realize that she'd gone. William Shakespeare, who's the famous writer, was well acquainted with death and many of his siblings died at a real early age. And even his own son, at age 11, died tragically. And Shakespeare wrote these words, Shorten my days, thou canst with sullen sorrow, and my eyes are full of tears, my heart full of grief. I think he may have been inspired by the book of Lamentation, because in chapter 2, verse 11, we read, My eyes fail from weeping, I am tormented within, my heart is poured out. It's widely believed that the book of Lamentations was written by the prophet Jeremiah. 
And he wrote it because he was so disturbed over the destruction of Jerusalem. The people were being taken away into captivity and all that they'd ever known in their city was gone, destroyed. Grief and sorrow caused by the death of a loved one or a place are natural emotions. And bereavement is often caused by the death of maybe a friend, a close family member, even a pet. It can also be caused by the ending of a relationship. It can be caused by people losing their job or their work. And very often, people that are made redundant feel that sense of grief and loss because they've had a place where they felt valued, where there was prestige, and yet it's gone. And so they struggle with where they're finding then their sense of worth, their sense of value. And it can be difficult. And then there's the situation that we heard in the book of Lamentations where people grieve over having to move house or to go to a different city or to have to sell a house that they love so much. It's really difficult. And these situations do stir up emotions in us, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. Sometimes we get a chance to prepare ourselves, and at other times it's sudden, and the emotion takes over us. Sudden, like in the earthquakes that have happened in Turkey and Syria, very sudden. Their homes, their city, people, everything that they were familiar with, gone. In 2018, my marriage suddenly collapsed. And I remember our previous minister, Sylvia, saying to me that what I was experiencing was grief and bereavement. I was grieving for the loss of my marriage, for the destruction of all those hopes and dreams for the future that I'd imagined. I cried so much. And I do hope and pray that anybody else that's going through that situation, that I can comfort them having traveled through that experience. There is another aspect of grief and bereavement that can occur for those that are still living. Those of you who work with people or care for people with dementia will understand. It's a terrible thing for family and friends to have to go through the changing personality of someone that was once a friend and a confidant. How we suffer bereavement for the loss of their character and the personality of someone that we once loved. We care for those that once cared for us because they become childlike and they need help with the basic simple things in life like getting washed or dressed. For those caring and living with people with dementia, they feel grief and bereavement while the person is still physically alive. Whatever the cause of our bereavement, it can affect us physically in our health and our well-being. Anxiety, panic attacks, numbness, anger. There's many physical side effects. And as we experience the emotions, they impact on us. Heart palpitations, sleeplessness, the list goes on of how each one of us is affected by the loss of grief. And yet we all must go through it. My mom said that when my stepdad died, that uh, she said she felt like she was in a fog. And uh, she said that 
for almost two years, she couldn't remember, and she still can't really remember how she functioned during that time. It's the same for a lot of people. When you lose somebody really close to you or something, you feel like you're in that fog and you can't think straight. Jesus encountered death, and there are examples that we read in the Gospels. In John, we hear about the death of Lazarus, and when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her crying, he was deeply moved. Jesus was touched by the grief of the friends and the families of those that were gathered there, so much so that it caused him to weep. And when people that we care about are sad, it affects us as well, and we try to offer comfort in whatever way that we can. When we're experiencing grief and bereavement, we appreciate the comfort of those around us. Our reading from Isaiah opened with comfort, comfort my people, says your God. And that comfort can be different for each one of us. Each person has a unique and personal way of dealing with grief. Jesus also encountered the synagogue leader and he'd been told that his daughter had died. And he went to Jesus in distress. And that's a common thing that people do turn to God and to Jesus at times when they're facing imminent death or the dying. We read in Luke chapter 7 about another occasion when Jesus encountered the funeral procession. And Jesus went to a town called Nain and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, who was a widow. So this woman had not only lost her husband, but now she'd lost her son as well. And for a Jewish woman, this was very significant because she lost all her status and all her financial um, support was gone. The story continues. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her. And Jesus is always full of compassion. And his heart broke for this woman. She was desperately anxious about her future. She was grieving for the loss of her child. And for many of you that may have experienced that, there is no situation that any parent wants to face or go through than that of contemplating the death of their own child or to have to go through it. People turn to the Lord in great times of sorrow. And that's absolutely right, because Psalm 1473 says, the Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. When those we love die, we grieve because we miss them. We miss the fact that we won't ever be able to have a conversation again with them. We miss the fact that we won't be able to touch them or feel them and their touch on us. We miss these physical aspects of someone immensely. And yet, they do live on in our memories and in our hearts and in our minds. And sometimes you can uh, hear a song and it can remind you of that person or you can catch a glimpse of something that reminds you of a situation you were in with them or you can smell something that instantly brings them back and a situation to your mind. I know that when my um, dad died, I kept a few of his most worn clothes 
so that occasionally I could just go to my wardrobe and bury my nose in his jacket and feel close to him. And I wore one of his jumpers for months until I felt strong enough to let these things go. And the amazing thing is that I know my dad knows Jesus. So he's in heaven. And so that makes it different for me because I know that one day I will be reunited with my earthly father as well as my heavenly father. I spoke about Jesus encountering the three deaths and I want to revisit each one of these. Jesus saw the dead son of the widow woman. His heart went out to her and he said, don't cry. And he went to the coffin and he put his hand on it and he said, young man, I say to you, get up. And lo and behold, he sat up in the coffin. Can you imagine the astonishment of the mourners that were there, those that were grieving, they think they were seeing an apparition or something. This synagogue leader's daughter was dead. She was in the home. And Jesus went to that home where she was and he saw all the mourners and all those that were gathered there and he threw them out. It might sound brutal, but he needed to clear them. And then he went and he held the hand of the girl and the girl got up. Can you imagine the parents' astonishment and amazement at what they were witnessing? The story of Lazarus is much more well known that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days when Jesus arrived at the scene where the mourners again were gathered and he was deeply moved by their grief. And he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Then Lazarus came staggering out of the grave, still in the grave bandages so he could hardly move. And Jesus had to say to the stand, the, those standing by, for goodness sake, take the bandages off him. They must have been absolutely stunned. Four days, cold, stone, dead. And then he comes staggering out of the grave. Death is no match for Jesus. Hallelujah. These events all happened when Jesus was in the fleshly body like you and I. Jesus told us that he only did and said what the Father had instructed. So that means that God never intended us to die. So you might be thinking, so how come we still do? And that's a very good question. Some people do try to avoid death and spend thousands on it, but death is a certainty. Even those that Jesus rose from the death eventually did die. So how should we then as the family of God be? What difference does it make? What's the significance of us being in a relationship with God? It's okay to grieve. It's okay to be sad to shed tears as we try to come to terms with the loss of someone or something that's very dear to us. However, as Christians, we hope in the promises of God. So no matter how bad things might seem in the natural, the Bible is full of the promises of God. They're hopeful promises. And in our reading today from Isaiah, we had this. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of God endures forever. Hallelujah. There is only one comforter that truly can meet with us all. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Some people do have the gift to comfort others. 
2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 to 5 reads, The God of all comfort comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Death for a Christian is not the end. It's not the end of life, but the true beginning of life. It's a different life, one in the presence of our Lord God. In John 14, Jesus told us a little bit about heaven. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you because in my Father's house there are many rooms. And he said, I'm going to come back and take you there so that you can be with me. We all have a choice of where we want to spend eternity. And that choice is simple. We spend eternity either here, wanting to go to heaven, or we go to hell. It's a simple choice. And people might think that when you die, you just die. And sadly, they are misled. Hopefully one day they will come to make the right choice to choose Jesus and spend eternity and be assured of where that eternity is. And Jesus said very truly, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Hallelujah. That's such an amazing promise hidden there in the word of God for us. Christ the servant king preaches the word of God week on week. And we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So each week your faith is being built up as you open your heart to the word of God. So Jesus said, whoever hears my word. So that means you all listening here, anyone that's listening online, whoever hears my word. Those people, those of us, can cross over from death into a new life. And that's the gospel message. That's the good news of Jesus. He never wanted us to die. So he gave himself to death on the cross so that we can live a new life in him. And if you're thinking that you have to earn that favor, that you've got to do something, that's not true. If you think about Jesus on the cross, he had a criminal either side of him. And one of those criminals recognized that Jesus was a good man, that he'd never sinned. And he said, remember me when you go into heaven. And Jesus said, today you will be with me. That criminal didn't have time to read his Bible. He didn't have time to do a load of good deeds or do a load of praying. All he said was yes to Jesus that day on the cross. And his life was forever changed because now he's with Jesus. That's where we all should be, making that decision. It truly is that simple. Believe it in your heart and say yes to Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank and praise you that it is your will that heaven be full and hell empty. You love all of your children so much and parents and people here gathered never lose hope of how your prayers can be impacted on those people around you. Keep praying into their lives. Father God, we thank and praise you that you want to spend eternity with us. Your plans for us are good. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come. We can know more of your love for us. Show us how to comfort those that are sad, 
that are sorrowing, that are grieving right now, Lord God, that we can comfort those with the comfort you give to us. And Lord, I do pray that you do a mighty work in healing broken hearted that you restore the hope of a future, that you give those people that are left here feeling lonely and sad a purpose to keep living for the joy of eternity with you. Father God, for others that may have lost their work, who may have lost their status, who may have been grieving for the loss of physical ability, Lord, come close to these people, your children. We know your promises that you will never leave us, never forsake us. Help each person, Lord, to feel and to know in their heart the closeness of your love. We hold every heart up towards you, Lord. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Amen.